gonna switch gears a little bit today. Uh, basically, I'm gonna talk about the ancient ancestor of uh, modern land plants and kind of switch gears uh, and talking about the idea of cyanobacterial mass and this microbial salad bar and uh, how interesting and complex it is leading to the formation of my modern microbial life. And you're like, what are all these things? And it's okay, if you don't know, I'll get you there. So I want to eventually take you on a geological journey because my, what, I, what I work on is I work on a geological process. I work on an ancient geological process. But I'm using molecular uh, biology to actually solve and answer this question. So we'll start off with the Earth, basically 4.6 billion years uh, around. Then you have the end of the early of the Martian. So this is kind of the end of the kind of chaos that happened in, in, uh, on Earth for, for a long time. Uh, from there, you had the evolution of this RNA world. So basically, you had ribozymes, or things that look kind of like viral enzymes that basically gave rise to ribonucleotide reductase to DNA, and eventually the evolution of a membrane. From this kind of RNA world, eventually the DNA, and then a membrane, you had the first biochemistries. This is all in oxygen, so we have no oxygen in the environment at this point. Some of the first, depending on who you talk to, are sulfate reduction, methanogenesis, and eventually anoxygenic photosynthesis. So taking something in like H2S, the same smell in uh, rotten eggs, and turning that and using that electron donor. From there, you have the first stromatolites. So this is an artist's depiction of the first stromatolites. This is the oldest known uh, record of life on the planet. So this is why they're interesting. And these are completely, once again, anoxic. Uh, eventually, uh, at 2.8 billion years, you had the first oxygenic photosynthesis that started occurring. And here's a classic example that's also associated with stromatolites. This is known as gliobacter by uh, It's an ancient uh, type of cyanobacteria. It doesn't have a thylakoid membranes. It looks really funky. You wouldn't even recognize it. And this first cyanobacteria led to this amazing event that changed everything on the face of the planet. And this is a thing called the grid oxidation event. And basically, it's the rusting of the planet. 90% of the minerals you see today are due to this event the greatest mass extinction event that's ever occurred on the face of the planet. 99.9% of things wiped out. From there, something you might recognize, maybe not, you had the first eukaryotic uh, uh, oxygenic phototrophs, so something like an alga. Uh, at 1.2 uh, uh, billion years, you had the first kind of colonization of land. And then the end or the decline of the stromatolite period. And this is mainly due to grazing pressure, possibly from other higher form eukaryotes. But really, what's interesting is that 85% of Earth's history has been dominated by these guys. And they're still present today. And that's, what, that's the difference between the ancient and the modern. So what is a microbial? And when my boss told me this first, I was like, I didn't even know what they were. So what is a microbial? So it's a, geo it's a geological term for a group of rocks, basically. So you have stromatolites which basically means layered, benthic, laminated, microbial deposit. So some sort of metabolism <coughs> leading to layers. You have the dendrolites, which basically is a similar thing, but you have these branching structures. The thrombolites, this is a lot of the stuff that I see. Um, these are basically clotted structures, so thrombus, coming from the word clotting. And then you have oncosolites, which are basically a derivative of stromatolites, but these are formed very uniquely. So map of the Earth. Um, when I initially started looking at this, I knew about the ones in Shark Bay, that's right here. So the oldest stromatolite fossils are from this area here. And there's been a lot of work done on stromatolites in the marine systems. But then when I started looking at this, they're everywhere. And the difference here is that, you know, you have the red circles, which are your freshwater. You have your uh, square boxes, which are your either hypersaline or hot springs. Uh, even Yellowstone has stromatolites or microbialites. Uh, you also have them in the Antarctic. There were. I, and every time I look for them, I find new ones. <coughs> so there's a picture of a, a thrombolite structure that I pulled out that we have up in northern BC. So to get in, kind of get you, get your head wrapped around this very complex process, you have to first start with the abiotic factors. So in order to make this rock, basically you have to have the right conditions. You have to have high alkalinity, high hardness, an alkaline pH. The Layers here go from aerobic to anaerobic because you have a microbial mat. And I'll explain what that mat is comprised of. And in most cases, you have an aerobic water column, but in other cases, you have uh, degrees of uh, gradients of chemicals. So, what makes up this mat, and that's what the main bulk of the talk is going to be about today, so the mat is.
and basically made by filamentous cyanobacteria and uh, certain types of eukaryotes. So here we have a perfect example of something like Nustock and, and Lindolibia. These make the bulk of the map that we see here above. We also have some really interesting photosynthetic protists and something that initially when I saw this, I was like, that's a plant. And these, these kind of grow right out of the rocks. And really, this is unicellular algae. This is carbon. And somehow it's involved and has some sort of symbiosis where it actually uses calcium carbonate to actually move its seed around. And then in the water column, you have these kind of unicellular platonic cyanobacteria, something like Synecococcus or Synecocystis. You have the photosynthetic diatoms and something that looks like a bowl box. So there's some interplay between the platonic and the kind of map dwelling ones on the microbial layer. What's interesting, though, and what we're interested in, and I can show you the formula for, oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> apple, <laughs> <laughs> So basically, you have oxygenic photosynthesis, uh, which basically increases the alkalinity, which leads to the formation of calcite, and of course, it's awful here. Uh, and that, which make, that makes the microbial layer. So this is the kind of main thing. So first kind of questions I had is, is this structure, is the structure of the microbial community, is that complex or simple? First kind of basic question. From there, who are the dominant members of this community? And then is oxygenic photosynthesis the only metabolism present? Because everyone's like, cyanose, it's all about cyanose. It's all you need is cyanose. You don't need anything else. So back to this picture again, and I have a bunch of sites all over the world. Today I'm going to focus on the main site, which is a CSA-funded project, and this is the really one. This is about five hours away from here in the Caribou Plateau. And this is a beautiful example of the thrombolites that you see at Pavilion Lake. So a depth profile. And why is everybody interested in Pavilion Lake? Well, a diver went back in there in about 96 and said, why are all these corals? What are all these corals doing here? And they're not corals. They're actually microbialites. And what is of course. And so what's interesting about it, and it's the, one of the most unique things about Pavilion, is you have a morphological change as a function of depth. And I'll try to explain this. So at, at the top depth, you have these kind of lettuce kind of structures. At 20 meter depth, you have kind of something that looks like a round kind of cabbage. From there, you have a comb-like asparagus type of structure, <laughs> or something else you can think about. Uh, and then at the, the lower depth, you have these kind of, kind of almost like an artichoke. And uh, if you want to talk about microbes, and you want to talk about who's the Michelangelo of uh, microbialites, it's definitely these microbes in pavilion life. So it's an NASA CSA funded project. We got to use some of these neat like rovers to go in and collect samples, but instead of blasting you with data, I thought I'd go through some methods really quick. So basically, I grabbed some rocks, I examined uh, microscopy, I homogenized, extracted clay acids, and do some 4 by 4 sequencing. It's very hard to, uh, to look at these other things in the, the rocks. Uh, we also look at the water because we want to know what's specific to the microbialite and what's specific to the platonic cyanobacteria. Once again, kind of examined by microscopy. Uh, take the filter, extract the flake acids, and then do 454. Uh, we also work on viruses. Yeah. So it's hard to separate viruses from rocks, and I'm still working on that. Um, but basically, we, based from that filter, we let that stuff flow through. We use a thing called tangential flow filtration, which is basically removing water, thus concentrating the viruses. And we extract viral and flake acids and look at those as well. I don't unfortunately have time to talk about that today. Maybe it'll work. Uh, so basically, Hits you with something really basic. Um, just looking at the, mi at the micro the microbialites versus the water column, uh, what's interesting is basically dominated by bacteria in the microbialites. Uh, with 10% hitting to nothing. So 10% of the microbial fraction in microbialites in Billion Lake hits nothing, which is rare because we've resolved so many bacteria over the last couple of years. Uh, in the water column, we see a kind of, uh, we see that there's eukaryotes present, and at the photic zone, we have the maximum amount of eukaryotes, uh, photosynthetic eukaryotes in the water but I don't want to go into all those details, so I'll just focus on the ones on bacteria today. So basically, when you compare the bacteria in the water column and the microbial light, basically you're dominated by proteobacteria. And what's also very interesting is that 